Um, what I've done is I've installed a, a short circuit tester in into the location of where our fuse was blown. Um, and what we wanted to do before was come over here, unplug the ASD relay, which is this one right here. Here's my ASD. Unplug the ASD and uh, stay with me here, man. Can you see who that? Are you, am I on the film? Okay. Mm -hmm. ASD relay unplugged um, and then see if the fuse blew. Well, it uh, didn't blow. I came over, unplugged the ASD, or actually I put a new fuse in and the fuse wasn't blowing anymore. So then we you know, plugged everything back in and, and we uh, plugged all our sensors back in. Our cam, our crank, our TPS, our map. And when we plugged in the crank and actually two of us were doing it, crank and TPS at the same time, the fuse blew again. Uh, so I installed a short circuit tester to see if we can isolate where this is, but the problem now is we need it to happen for us to locate the problem. But right now we got power going to our computer. If you come back over here, you can look at, at my meter and with this, uh, this basically circuit breaker installed, is that okay? Mm -hmm. You can see I got five volts on my five volt reference wire that I did not have before. Our fuel pump is not running all the time like it was. And then there's my 12 volt feed that was nothing. And you can see that, you know, we got 12 volts on that wire now. So really this car should start. And I know we still need to fix, we still need to fix this wire, but this is only going to be for our, uh, our transmission shift solenoid or our transmission governor pressure sensor and our vehicle speed sensor so i'm not worried about this one right now i'll fix that later and that's just a five volt line a sorted five volt reference will not blow a fuse so i'm not worried about that we'll fix that later all right we're uh kind of all over the place with this I don't, that light's blinding me that's okay leave it on it's fine it's all, good. Yeah. all right, we're, we're all over the place with this car. We're showing procedures. Uh, we discussed the 5 volt reference circuit. Um, we uh, showed you how to find a sort in a 5 volt reference. Showed you how to check powers and grounds on a computer. Uh, what we're fighting right now is a power feed, blown fuse. We have a um, circuit tester installed, pan down here for me where my, my hand is. And uh, we're we mapped it out on a diagram. We found that this is the ASD circuit, auto shutdown relay, which feeds power to the injectors, feeds power to the ignition coil, uh, feeds power to, I think, the purge solenoid, and uh, a couple other components we're going to need to look. Oh, the O2 heaters. Oh, and, and the alternator, too, as well. And uh, what we need to do is a good visual inspection. In particular, where we want to look is O2 heaters, exhaust, melted wire on the exhaust, maybe the alternator. Let's look at the harness real close. Unfortunately, we really can't use our short circuit tester and follow needle bounces and find out where our short's at because it's not here right now. So we're going to use the scan tool to help us and we're going to go under ATM test and you're going to turn on the auto shutdown relay for me and go ahead and turn it on. And what that's going to do is energize the circuit and it's going to pulse it on and off. If you listen, you can hear it. Okay, it's an on off type test. So what we're going to do is a visual and now that the circuit's energized, we're going to go, we're going to wiggle some harnesses and see if we can make this thing trip and the fuse to blow, which is going to kick this little red light on right here. So we're going to watch this guy and uh, we're gonna go through the harness. So just kind of maybe film in general where I'm gonna go, starting with the alternator. Uh, I'm just looking for areas for heat and vibration is, is key for any intermittence. And you can just, in general, just kind of stand back and I'll, I'll tell you if I find something, do you know what I mean? Rather than moving around with me. Um, my O2 heaters for sure. Um, it was it was interesting when we plugged the crank sensor back in that that this fuse blew um, So I definitely want to focus on this harness back here And again what we're looking at too is is we're looking for this guy To uh, to light which will tell me that I I got a blown fuse O2 heaters are down further for the exhaust. So that's something else. I want to look at I'm gonna come around the other side I'm just doing a visual, looking at harnesses, but I do have a direction where I'm going. I know what circuit I'm dealing with. 
So I'm trying to eyeball my O2 down here now, which is by the exhaust. It would be nice if this thing would short while we're filming. Shine that right there on that exhaust pipe right there. So I didn't touch it yet. Let me get my light up here. I didn't touch it yet, but I have a wire laying on an exhaust pipe right there. You see it? This harness, and guess what? Yeah. See, the, see the green with an orange wire? That green with an orange wire is my guy. That's the circuit that this ASD is on. Back up a little bit right there. That was laying on the exhaust pipe. That's nice. And we got multiple wires. Wow. Um, Short. That's our problem. They're all shot. <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, and they're melted together. What does that go to? We need to figure out. Um, anytime you have, not only, sign that on that for me, not only is that a copper to ground, short to ground, but it's also copper to copper. Those bare wires touching each other. Okay? So we found that how? Visual inspection. We got the diagram of the fuses. The circuit, I'm sorry, we got the diagram of that fuse, everything that was on the fuse, we knew what circuit it was on, and we just did a visual of those components and we happened to see the wire laying on the exhaust pipe right there. Cool? That's our problem with this vehicle. We fix those wires and get those straightened out, get them taped up, get them cut, whatever we need to do, uh, we'll be able to get this vehicle running again. Uh, granted, one, uh, one more time, that speed we weren't necessarily going for for this. If we were in the field and we were doing this, we may not have done all the five volt reference short to ground type testing that I showed you and identifying it on the diagram. You probably would have started with fuses and you would have found that you had a blown fuse, right? And that um, with, a, with a fuse being blown, of course that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna chase the fuse, why the fuse blow? We would have been here right away. Uh, but in this case, we were trying to show procedures, right, which is the 5-volt reference circuit, how to check it for a short to ground, also how to identify powers and grounds on the computer, and how to test those, which is ultimately what led us to this. Blown fuse, fuses don't blow for no reason. Put a fuse in it, it blew right away one time, and then put another one in it, it didn't. Pulled the diagram, found out what was on it, mapped the circuit out on the vehicle, just eyeballing it. We saw that harness right there laying on the exhaust and wiring harnesses don't like exhaust manifolds. So that was a pretty easy, pretty easy uh, identification right there of a, of a wire problem and it's cooked. So we're gonna fix that and we'll go from there. Okay, just a final review on short to ground testing when you have a blown fuse looking for location of course we can use a inductive meter if your short is there but if it's not there you need to locate it really with a visual inspection and one of the things that I said again was heat and vibration is where you're going to find your problem in our case that knowledge put us to the O2 sensor and toward the O2 sensor. And that's what this harness is for. This is my O2 sensor harness connector. You can see the connector down. I'll zoom in on it. There's my O2 sensor connector. That is a four wire heated O2. And this harness that's burnt runs down to that. And that is part of our ASD relay circuit this green with an orange tracer comes from the ASD relay feeds power on the O2 heater circuit as well as multiple other components and that is our short to ground caused our fuse to blow eliminated power to half the computer caused the computer to give us a no communication also no 5 volt reference so we're going to take this harness apart, cut these bad wires out, fix it up. We should be good to go. All right, what we did is we pulled the uh, 
O2 harness connector out. So here's the end of it. And uh, we just unbolted the bracket that held it in place, pulled it up top, and you can see that every single wire for the O2 was melted and touching each other. It's a good thing on this design that the O2 heater circuit is not computer controlled because if it was, uh, this would have cooked the computer driver that controls the ground. If it was ground side switched heater circuit, which the newer ones are, this would have fried the computer driver for that and the O2 heater would have never functioned and he's, he'd have an O2 heater code you'd never be able to get rid of. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix these wires. I'll show you the before and after what it looks like. We're gonna cut this stuff out solder, heat shrink, do it the right way. All right, there was our after fix. Um, doesn't matter that we use different color wires, we just did them one at a time. So we have, uh, we cut out all the bad stuff. We used solder, heat shrink, and those look real nice guys. You guys did a good job on that. So what we want to do now is let's, let's get this whole thing wrapped up in electrical tape, put the plastic conduit back on, and get it tucked back down behind where it's supposed to go and we should be good to go. Nice job guys.